Okay, welcome back, ENG460. We're building a MIPS processor. So last time, what did we do? We basically did uh, MUX, 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 and MUX. We built a MUX that could be used for five of these. Now we'll instantiate them later, but let's go on and make a different component. And as I'm looking at all these components, instruction memory, register file, ALU, data memory, ALU control, controller, sign extender, the one that I think is the easiest would be sign extender. Look at the sign extender down here. It takes in 16 bits and it outputs 32. And basically what it does is it treats that 16-bit quantity as a two's complement, where the most significant bit, bit 15, is the sign bit. So what we want to do is we want to look at that bit, and if it's a 1, we want to replicate it 16 times to the left when we convert it to a 32. If that most significant bit going in is a zero, then it's a positive number, and we just want a zero pad out to the left and get our 32. Because that guy is going to be an input to the MUX into the 32-bit ALU, but it's also gonna go all the way up here, shifted left, and into a 32-bit adder, okay? So it has to be 32 bits, and we gotta preserve the sign bit. Now this thing comes from the lower 16 bits of the instruction. And this pertains to an I-type instruction because like on a branch equal, branch not equal, or um, actually even a, well, the immediate address is a relative offset and um, it could be positive or negative. So we have to preserve that sign bit. So let's go ahead and make a sign extender. Why don't we do that? All right, let's close this guy. And what we'll need to do is we will need to uh, come up with a, um, a sign extender. All right, let's do that. We are we have our MIPS project here. Doesn't have anything in it. And then we've got our MUX and our test bench. So let's come along here and do project, new source, VHDL module, and we'll do a sign extender. How about that? Sign extender. Did I spell that right? Sign extender. Yeah, it's a VHDL module. And I'll fill this in by hand. And there you go. Now we've got a sign extender. Here it is. Let's get rid of our comments. I need to find a flag that says don't comment this. I'm sure there's one in there, but that's all right. It's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. All right, so let's see. What kind of things go into our sign extender and what kind of things come out? 16 bits go in, 32 bits go out. Well, that's easy enough. So let's uh, set up our... Um, Entity block. Now this is a little bit different than the MUX. We don't have to make it work for different size data. We just make we just hard code it for an input of 16 bits and an output of 32 bits. Okay, so that's the easy part. What goes in, what comes out. Now, how would you do this in VHDL? Well, I'm going to copy and paste and just explain it to you. Let's come down to here, do that, and there you go. Sign extender out is my 32-bit quantity. Sign extender in is my 16-bit quantity. So there's sign extender out, all right? And that guy, I am doing this with a conditional signal assignment statement is equal to, okay, I've got my x. My x means hexadecimal, so four hex digits is 16 bits. Four times four is 16. So there's 16 zeros there. This is the concatenation operator, and I concatenate it with sen, sign extender in. When the most significant bit of that 16-bit coming in is zero, positive. All right, so this corresponds to me giving a positive number out. Now, when this condition is false, that means the most significant bit is negative, is one, and we're going to put a quad F in front of that guy. And that's going to correspond to like, a, you know, a, well, it's going to preserve it, the two's complement negativeness of the number. And I think that's all we have to do for a sign extender. Okay. So let's uh, see if that guy passes the uh, check syntax. And let's see, any errors there? No, nope, that's good. All right, so great, we have a sign extender. Well, what we need to do now is create a test bench, because you always got to test your stuff. Always got to test. Test, test, test. There's people that make a living out of doing nothing but tests. And uh, let's see, um, so what do we call this other one? We call it sign extender, so let's give it the similar name with a TB in front of it. Test bench, sign extender. Okay. Now, look, now I've got, uh, I've got a MUX, and I've got a sign extender and a MIPS component. It's saying, well, you're creating a test bench file. Which one do you want to test? Well, I want to test the sign extender. Okay. Finish. And it will generate a test bench file. Look in your Explorer window over here. And now there's my MUX. There's my test bench on my MUX. There's my sign extender we just wrote. And now here's my test bench on my sign extender. Now let's go over to the test bench on the sign extender. And what we'll do is 
get rid of all the comments. Okay. Now again, I'm not going to use the 87 format. I don't like that. So I'm going to get rid of this declaration. But I am going to change the way it instantiates down here. All right, let's call this guy U1 also test. Then you have to do entity. And then let's see, you got to do work dot. And then you have to give it the architecture. What's the architecture name? I believe it's just behavior. Yeah. Behavior. I should get something easier to spell. You could change that. I mean, I'm just defaulting to that. And there you go. Now I've created an instance of that sign extender. Okay. So let's go back up to here and do the usual game. Let's change our variables with a TB prefix there. And this circuit is not using any clock, so we can get rid of that. Okay. And let's see, we need to change them down here too, because the variables on the left are part of the component. The variables on the right are part of this test. Now, the, this guy stubs out two processes for you. One for a clock, but we're not going to use any clocks. Okay, so let's get rid of the clock process. And then you've got the stimulus process. Okay, let's redo that the way I like to do things. And, and the way I like to do it is assert false report end. And let's see, severity failure. I always put that guy in there at the end. Okay. I can probably program this guy to always do that for me. Okay. Now, what kind of test bench do we want to do here? Well, we kind of just want to set up SEN and then see what happens on SE out. So what we can do here is we can come along and just do some code like this. Okay. In my process. Okay. And what I'm going to do, this process is going to get fired off right away because it doesn't have any variables in its sensitivity list. And it's going to set my sign extender input to this. This means hexadecimal. We've got um, four hex digit, which are 16 bits, but notice the 7. 7 is 0, 1, 1, 1. This is the largest positive number you can have. And then I'm going to wait, and then down here I'm going to set it to 1 or 8, 0, 0, 0, but 8 in binary is 1, 0, 0, 0. So this is actually the biggest negative number you can have. And then I'll set it to quad F. Well, that's negative 1 in 2's complement. Okay. And um, let's see what happens. Yeah. So at this point, select sign extender, behavioral check syntax. And then, let's see, we want to go up to uh, the test bench, and let's check syntax on that. And then select the test bench and simulate. Okay. Zoom to full view, and there you go. Yeah, look what we did here. This is great. This is my input, the first row, and it was 7FFF. Coming out of that sign extender, I noticed the most significant bit was zero, so I just zero padded with zero. But then over here, those 16 bits, which you know would be the immediate address of an I-type instruction, were 8000. Zero, zero, zero. Well, I want to preserve that sign bit, so I converted this to quad F8000 for 32-bit representation. Now, this would be the 16-bit twos complement. This would be the equivalent 32-bit complement. And then we had quad F going into there, which is negative one. Well. Extending that most significant bit out would give me quad F, quad F. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with my sign extender. Um, yeah, so let's close this guy. And now when we look at our MIPS project, we've got MIPS and it's got the ability to instantiate MUXs and sign extenders. So if we bring our picture up, we've got our MUXs done. We've got that MUX done, this MUX done, this MUX done, this MUX done, this MUX done. We have this sign extender done, but we haven't, con we haven't uh, connected things. I wonder what would be easiest to do next. I wonder what would be easiest. Let's see. Pick a component, any component. Maybe the ALU. Yeah, let's do the ALU next. All right, I'll see you next time, and we'll do the ALU.